All right, so in this episode, I'm going to talk about first price auction. We already discussed first price auction, uh, but we actually solved it for two bidders only and uh, with under very uh, sort of strict uh, requirement that the, that the form of the strategy was already given to us. And so uh, uh, we solved the strategy that actually uh, fits to this that format. So if you look at the previous chapter, uh, you'll see the uh, the solution of the first price auction. But again, it's a special case of uh, of, of this solution. This is the general uh, the most general solution we can provide for first price auction. What we have we have n players, which is more than or equal to two. And uh, we do not know the probability distribution function f, so it can be any continuous probability distribution function, and then solve a symmetric Bayesian Nash equilibrium of the first price auction. But let's remember what the first price auction was. Remember, n bidders simultaneously and independently uh, submit their bids in a sealed bid. Uh, B1, B2, all the way up to Bn. Let's suppose these are the bids of the players. The highest bidder is going to win the object and he's going to pay his bid, bi, and everybody else is going to pay nothing, zero, and they also get nothing, zero. All right? Um, so, in the first prize auction, clearly, unlike the second prize auction, nobody has incentive to bid his or her true valuation. Well, why is that? Well, simple. If I bid the uh, if I bid my true value and if I if I lose I'm going to get nothing anyway. But if I win, uh, my payoff is going to be my valuation minus my bid, which is exactly the same as my valuation. So I'm going to get zero payoff whether I win or not. So the question is: Is there any equilibrium uh, where players can actually make a positive payoff in expected terms? Obviously, because uh, here, we're not going to be using a dominant strategy equilibrium. We're going to be looking for uh, a Bayesian Nash equilibrium. Well, why is that? Well, because in this game, no strategy is weakly or strictly dominant strategy. Uh, and, and so we need a weaker solution concept, which is Bayesian Nash equilibrium. And so uh, the, the, the payoffs are going to be in expected terms because remember in the Bayesian Nash equilibrium, we take expectation over the possible uh, types of the opponents or beliefs. All right, so we solve symmetric Bayesian Nash equilibrium strategy. Well, what does that mean? That means all the players uh, follow exactly the same bidding function. Well, why function? Remember, in a Bayesian games, a strategy is a function which maps types to uh, uh, some real numbers, the, the strategies. So let's call it S, the set of strategies. Right? So there are infinitely many types. And so therefore, uh, in a Bayesian game, a strategy is a function. Well, it is a symmetric strategy because all players follow exactly the same function. So whenever you see bi, so here in the notation, the subscript i or not is, is, is gonna make a lot of difference. bi is the strategy of player i, and b is the another strategy. What I'm saying is that all the players are going to follow the same strategy. This is the strategy profile I'm looking for, okay? Well, furthermore, we're going to assume that this B function, the strategy, is strictly increasing, meaning if, the, if your valuation is higher, you're going to bid higher. If your valuation is lower, you're going to bid lower, okay? Strictly increasing, continuous, and differentiable. Well, you may wonder, is there any equilibrium where uh, it is not continuous, it's not differentiable, it's increasing? Well, these are not um, terribly strong assumptions, uh, by the way, but let's stick to that for simplicity, uh, for technical simplicity. All right, so what is the scenario that I should be looking at? Well, remember, in order to check Bayesian-Nash equilibrium, let's suppose everybody else is playing the symmetric Nash equilibrium. Question is, do I want to play the same symmetric, uh, uh, same symmetric B function or something different? All right, that's what we are gonna do. All right, so 
Put differently, assume that all the bidders, J, different than I, use the identical uh, bidding function B, I, uh, B, okay? So B of J is equal to B, S, J. Remember, given your type, given players J's type, S, J, he's going to bid according to B function. So B, S, J is going to be his bid. So everybody else is bidding according to this function. However, player I, just randomly pick one player. And so let's call it I. Player I bids B, I. And let's suppose it's different than B, right? Potentially different than B, S, I. Okay? So bidder I's expected payoff, given that he bids B, I, and given that everybody else bids according to this function, and player I signal is S, I, what would be his expected payoff? Well, remember, in the second price auction, we do not calculate expected payoff because the weekly dominant strategy doesn't require calculating expected utility. You have to look at or compare the payoffs column-wise. But here, we don't know which column we could be, and so we have to take an expectation. All right? So, utility of player I, or payoff of player I, given that he's bidding BI, and everybody else is bidding according to this function, and player I's uh, signal is SI, is going to be what? Well, first off, with some probability, he's going to lose and get zero payoff. So zero times that probability. So we ignore that. Well, with the remaining probability, the probability that he's going to win, right? So this is the probability that I wins. He's going to get the object and he's going to pay BI and his true Evaluation is SI, remember his signal. So SI might, well, is SI bigger than BI, less than BI? We don't know. We did not yet specify it. I'm just writing the payoff function. So SI minus BI times the probability that player I is going to win. Well, what is this probability that player I is going to win? Well, remember, every other player J, his bid must be less than or equal to BI. So you may say, well, but we ignored equality. Why we are putting equality? Well, um, this equality we put there because when we calculate the probabilities, we need the equality. But again, don't forget, putting here equality or not is not going to change anything. All right? So we put it sometimes uh, when it's convenient notation-wise, and we ignore it when it is, again, convenient notation-wise. So here, notation-wise, it is convenient, and so I put equality. And again, the reason is when these bids are equal, it really doesn't going to change anything because the probability distribution f is continuous, and so that event is going to have a zero probability. All right, so it shouldn't change the cal probability calculation. All right, so when uh, uh, bidder I wins, well, if every other player's bid, which is, remember, this bid bidding, according to this bidding function, is less than or equal to BI. Hmm. So um, I know I need some space, but this is an important term, right? Because here I am rewriting the expected utility of the bidder I, and I say, let me just state it, and then I'm going to come back here. Bidder I is actually going to choose the bidding strategy, BI, in order to maximize his expected payoff, right? He is best responding. Suppose that others are bidding according to this bidding function. What would be my profit maximizing bid? So maximize by choosing BI, uh, my strategy, maximize what? This expected payoff. So this expected payoff is nothing but SI minus BI times probability of winning. All right, so this is the probability of winning. I know it looks complicated, actually it's not. Let's calculate or show why they're equal. Um, I need a little bit of space, not too much for now. So here, remember, this is the probability that bj, which is equal to b of sj, uh, is less than or equal to bi, okay? Hmm, so what does that mean? First off, ignore this bj. So b is a 
increasing function, continuous function, differentiable function. So I know that I can just invert this function. I mean, I can write that Sj is less than or equal to B inverse Bi. So we, we all know how to uh, take the inverse of a function, all right? But we don't know the specific functional form of B. And so let's just use this notation B inverse. So Sj should be less than or equal to B minus 1 Bi. Remember, Sj is a random variable for player i. I mean, player i doesn't know his opponent's player j's true signal. All he knows that Sj is actually distributed according to this probability distribution f. So the question is, what is the probability that Sj is in fact less than or equal to b minus 1 bi. Well, remember, this is the very definition of a cumulative distribution function. This is f of uh, b inverse bi, right? This term. Huh. But remember, this has to be true for every j different than i. Huh. Well, here is the niceness of independent valuation assumption comes. Remember, players' signals are independent from one another. And so, therefore, if this is the probability that player J's uh, uh, bid is less than or equal to Bi, this is also the probability that player J prime's uh, uh, bid is less than or equal to Bi. This is also the same probability where a uh, player, I don't know, uh, J double prime's bid is less than or equal to Bi. So because there are n many players, if we exclude player i, how many other players we have? n minus 1. Therefore, because we have n minus 1 many other players, the probability that the bid of all the other players is going to be less than or equal to bi is f to the power n minus 1 this all right because we basically multiply this probability n minus 1 many times because those are independent probabilities events and so we multiply them so for that reason we have the utility expected utility of player i is nothing but si minus bi times this probability which is the probability of player i winning, all right? So player i chooses his bid to maximize this payoff. This is how we find his best response. So how do we find the uh, uh, payoff maximizing or best response strategy? Well, we just take the first order condition, take the derivative of this, set it equal to zero and solve for bi, okay?